Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. Greet me as you come in. Greet one another as you come into the room. Good morning. This is Monday. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will be glad in this day. Come on in the room. We bless the Lord just for everything that he has done in our lives. We bless him for who he is, for how he continues to show himself strong to all of the people of God. We bless the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on in the room. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning to all of you. Good morning, Sister Nicole. Good morning. Good morning to you, Sister Natalie. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Monisha. Brother Jordan, if you are there, good morning. Sister Sherilyn, good morning to you. Come on in the room. Sister Rebecca, good morning. So good to see you. Sister Miller, so good to see you as well. Listen, I just bless the Lord. Good morning, Sister Roz. We had a great time yesterday with those young ladies who are aspiring to be something great in this community. We just bless God for them. Sister Erlene, good morning to you. Kelly, good morning. Sister Felicia, good morning to you. Come on in the room. Good morning. I'm telling you, I believe the Lord is pleased with, with what we are doing. We are, he is pleased with us giving him our first this morning. I'm going to talk about that. So I'm going to go before the Lord in prayer. And then we're going to get right into what I believe the Lord has for us. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you. I bless you, Lord. God, I praise you because you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be honored and adored. You are worthy, Lord God, to be lifted up in this place, Lord God. And we thank you, God, just for who you are in our lives. We thank you, Lord God, for your healing power, Lord God, for just delivering us, Lord God, and for setting us free. Lord God, I thank you for the peace, God, right now that is in these places that we are in. Lord God, that allows our minds to be clear and be clean and be focused on what it is that you would have for us to know and to hear. Lord God, we bless you, God, for all that you've done for us over the weekend, oh Lord God, for how you kept us, oh Lord God. And when there was in a danger, Lord God, that you took us out of danger, you pulled us out of it, Lord God. You made the enemy, God, stay away from us, Lord God, so that we could continue to walk in the will and the way that you had for us. God, we thank you for this word that's going to go forth. And I pray, Lord God, that it will fall on good ground, that the people, Lord God, may hear it, Lord God, and do all that is contained therein. We thank you, God, all for all that shall take place. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning to all of you that I did not greet while I was yet in prayer. Sister Valerie, good morning to you. Uh, Sister Rochelle, good morning. Brother Dwayne, thank you for joining. God bless all of you. As you know, we are in our season um, of prayer. Um, hopefully, you all have been joining. You pulled down that prayer prayer pamphlet, and you have been walking with us throughout our time, throughout our season of prayer. Um, it is Monday morning, so because it is morning, we are um, still, again, in our time, um, prayer time. We have been talking about getting ourselves in position for our blessing, getting ourselves in position. Good morning, Sister Phyllis, Brother Frank, good morning to you. Being in the position that we need to be in so that we can be blessed, so that we can be healed by the Lord. Good morning, Sister Mary, Deacon Ron, good morning to you. And because we are in our season of prayer, we at um, Kingdom Life, we are preparing ourselves for something, preparing ourselves for something great. Good morning, Sister Elaine. Preparing ourselves so that we can have the abundance that God has promised to us. And as I um, spoke a word on yesterday in service, one of the things that the Lord impressed upon me was in order for us to receive the abundance that he has, we have to have everything that the Lord says. We have to know what God is telling us and then we have to walk in it. And he said there was something that we have been forgetting that, listen, there was a first fruit. We know we give offering and we know we give tithe. There's a first fruit. And I talked about that principle on yesterday. I'm going to talk about it today just briefly. But the thing I really want to talk about is who do you honor? So someone had asked me, um, what is it that I was asking um, as far as we get to the end on March 17th is the end of our prayer campaign. Um, so what was I asking for the people that were listening to do? And just so that you are on, yes, <laughs> wonderful. Good morning. Thank you, Sister Rebecca. You found a wonderful church. God bless you. Um, the Spirit spoke to me and he said, um, because this is the first fruit offering that we are praying um, up to for March 17th. He said, um, and the first fruit is a seed that we set aside, but um, it is our first and our best. And many of you may have heard of the first fruit offering. There are many offerings that were spoken of in the Old Testament. And then they were also then talked about again in the New Testament. Um, you may find that we are a pattern teaching church. And so if we find it in the old, we find it in the new, and we believe that God then seals it. Um, but it is about giving our first and about giving our best. And I love it when I can get up the first thing in the morning and give the Lord my best praise, give him my best worship, give him the best of me, give him my best breath. 
Give the Lord, listen, my best prayer. Give him my best conversation, my first and my best. Because then I believe that when I give the Lord my first and my best, then he is able to bless the rest. He blesses abundantly the rest of my day. When I look, wake up on Monday or Sunday, whatever you call the first of your week, when you give that to God, the first and best, then, the, then God is able to bless the rest. And I'm telling you, it is abundant blessing. And so then you feel that if something may be out of order, out of whack, you are able to call on the Lord Jesus Christ and say, because I gave you my best, Lord God, I know you're going to fix it. Good morning, Sister jo Joanne, Sister Dora. Good morning to you. I know you're going to fix it. So we give in the first fruit, the principle of the first fruit. We give our first to God. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then it says, everything else will be added unto you. What is everything else? Everything. Everything for your life, for your health, for your healing, and for happiness. So that in order for God to bestow his, his um, supernatural blessings upon us, Upon our natural, we give our first and, be and best. And so, um, and so what is it I'm asking? What I'm asking, according to what the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me even yet this morning, he says, instead of you seeding into our house, you seed into your own houses on March 17th. This is what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to seed into your own houses. If you have a church home, I'm asking you to do a first fruit offering to your own church house. Take it to your own priest. Because in Deuteronomy 26, it, it talks about, it says, when the Lord then brings you into the land, when he is giving you an inheritance, he's, you, he's saying that you will possess the land, you will dwell in it. And then what he says to you in Deuteronomy 26, he says, you shall take the first of the produce of the ground and you shall bring it from the land the Lord is giving you and you put it in a basket and you put it where the Lord God chooses for you to make his name abide and the chooses where's the Lord's name at should be in the house of God take it to the place to the house of God to your house of God and take it to the priest and tell and make a declaration to the priest and then Deuteronomy 26 that's why we make declarations before our apostle and we let him know these are the things that we are decreeing and declaring in regard to the seed that we are sowing. And the word of the Lord is saying, I declare today to the Lord, your God, that I have come to the country which the Lord swore to my fathers to give us. And what you are basically saying is, in, in, you know, we have been afflicted. We have gone through some things. We have gone through some situations. But now, God, you have brought us out. You have brought us into a land that is flowing with milk and honey. And you are honoring the Lord because of that. So you are honoring the Lord with the first and the best because the Lord has brought you out of a situation. And then the word of the Lord is saying, and you have set us, Lord, before you, that God, you will worship the Lord. We will worship the Lord. So then it says, you shall rejoice in every good thing which the Lord has given to you and has given to you and to your house. You will rejoice in those things. And so I am asking that you on March 17th, Make a first fruit offering, the first and best. How, what am I asking you? Generally, what we say about the first and best is you can take maybe one day's salary. Or one day, of, I talk about all the streams of income. The Lord promises us many streams of income. There may be streams from your, your regular work. You may have um, a side job, your side gig, streams of income from your side gig. You also may have streams of income. You may have rental properties from your rental properties. You may have other investments, income from your income investments, income from your hobbies, whatever that income is, whatever your increase is, I want you to take one day of that, one day of income of that, or one week of income of that. It could be one hour of income of that, could be one month of income of that, but the first of it, set it aside is what the word of the Lord is saying to us, sanctify it, set it aside that it may be used as the root. And the word of the Lord is saying to us, when that root is blessed, he says, I'm going to bless the whole, re the rest of it. The root will determine, determine how the rest of it is blessed. That's the principle of the first fruit. And you take that and you take it to your house of God and you bless it. You seed it into your house of God. And then my, what I'm saying then I will put up a, a, a link for kingdom life. And if you just so want to make a blessed, make an offering into the house of kingdom life, I would like for you to do that. Then after what you've done to your own houses, if there are those of you who are on the line, who don't have a church home and you are not in our city, I'll ask then that you can make your first fruit offering to kingdom life. 
or if you just want to make, again, a donation, a contribution to Kingdom Life in regard to this word that you have heard. Because I'm telling you, when you make your first fruit offering, your seed into your house of God, you will be blessed. So I'm talking about, what I'm talking about this morning is honoring, honoring the Lord with your first fruit based on the word of God. Because as you all understand, and as you know, the word works. Now let me get to what I'm talking about this morning. And I'm talking about honoring, honoring the Lord. Proverbs 3, 9 through 10. It says, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. Listen, again, I would like for you to greet one another as you come in this room. Greet me. Let me know that you are here. And let me know that, listen, that this word is good and sound for you. Let me know that this is a good word for you. And then number 10 says, So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses will burst forth, burst out with new wine. Listen, and then as I talk about the first fruit, I want to say, even in Romans chapter 11, as I said to you, we go from the old to the new. I talked about a verse, a chapter that was in Deuteronomy. Then I went to Proverbs and now I'm going to the New Testament. I'm going to Romans because that means it still stands. So Romans 11 and 6, it says, For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. So in order for us, good morning, Bishop Jones, in order for us to get what it is that we're talking about, in order for us to understand what it is that we're saying, and Bishop Jones, I want you to go back to the beginning because I told the people of God what it is that we're doing, the, what it is the seed that we are sowing into our houses of God, not the house of kingdom life, but we're sowing into each to houses that we are in. We are sowing a first fruit offering into our own houses. So every person that is on this line, wherever church they belong to, I've asked them to sow a seed into their own house, a first fruit offering into their own house, that they may bless their own house, that their houses may be blessed and that their own homes may be overflowing with new wine. But the word of the Lord is saying, so we're getting rid of old wine skin because we don't want the wine skins to burst because of the new wine that the Lord is going to be pouring into their houses because of the obedience that they're going to be. Oh my God, the obedience of the word that's going forth on this morning. So faith is what we're establishing. Because of the word of God, even in the New Testament, again, I'll say it, Romans eleven sixteen. it says, for if the first fruit is holy, the lump is also holy. If the first, if what you have set aside is holy, then Laura says the lump is also holy. Everything else is also holy. So what you set aside will determine, listen, the increase of the rest. It will determine, listen, if the canker worm will eat up the rest. I talked about it on yesterday. I said, don't eat your seed. Don't eat your seed. Even as the woman, when Elijah was sent to her, he, God had prepared that seed already for him. He said to God, God said to Elijah, he said, go, I prepared a woman who will feed you in this time of drought. Elijah went to the woman and he said to the woman, he said, listen, I am hungry. I need something. And the woman said, as she was preparing, she said, listen, man of God. She said, I just have a little bit of meal. I got a little bit of oil and me and I'm going to make this cake and my son and I are going to die. And I just said, listen, before you do that, he says, why don't you bring me some water? He said, make the cake for me first. Give me the first one. We talked about the first and the best. He said, if you give me the first one, he says, I guarantee you, you will not die. You and your son will not die, but you will have enough that you will be able to live, listen, until this drought is over. The woman of God did what the man of God said. She made the cake for him first. She gave him the first. And after she gave him the first, as the Bible says, for if the first fruit is holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. She gave him the first. And because she gave him the first, the word of the Lord says that she had enough, listen, for those three years of that drought and then enough after and if you continue in that same vein, I love this because not only was she blessed with her food in her household, but you know, later on in that passage of scripture, the woman's son died and the woman, not only was she blessed in, in, in wealth, blessed because she had food to eat, but she was also blessed in health because she sent for the man of God and the man of God came back and he healed her son. Her son lived again. So when that first fruit, when you give your first and best, when you set it aside, the Lord will do what it is he says he's going to do. He will bless the rest of whatever it is that you have, whatever you've set aside. So this morning, unless I'm giving the Lord my first and best this morning, 
my first and best of worship, my first and best of praise, my first and best best of devotion, my first and best of meditation, my first and best of prayer. And I'm telling you, today is going to be a great day. Because the Lord is going to bless the rest of it. He is going to put his super on my natural. And whatever comes to me today, I'm going to be able to handle it. I'm going to be able to call on the Lord. Listen, if it's something that I think that I can't deal with or handle, I'm going to be able to call on him on him because of that. How can I do that? With faith. Faith. The confidence in God that I need. Because without the faith, it is impossible for me to please him. It is impossible for me to impact God, impact what God is going to do in my life if I don't believe him. I believe his word. I believe that he is going to do what he said he's going to do. When, listen, if he says for me to do something, I believe that he's going to come back and do what he says he's going to do. The seed, the seed is what I sow and the faith is what I reap. And my expectation decides what I am going to reap. It's my expectation. So I am mighty afraid that we have not been trained to expect. We've not been trained to wait in expectation for what the Lord has for us. Good morning, Sister Roz. We've not been trained to do it. So I have to train or turn my faith into a seed so that I can get something that money cannot buy. So yes, we have to elevate our thinking. We talked about that. We've got to elevate our thinking to train ourselves to expect something that something different to happen in our life. Don't just give, but give on purpose. And don't just live, but live intentionally, knowing that God is going to bless your life. We've got to expect God to open doors and expect God to heal, expect God to work miracles. And as I get back to that word honor, Proverbs 3, 9 and 10 again, it says, honor the Lord with your possessions, honor him with the first fruit of all of your increase so that your barns will be filled and your your vats will be filled with plenty. Your vats will overflow with new wine. Honor, it means to esteem, to value with great respect. To honor someone is to value them highly or to bestow value upon them. We're talking about honoring the Lord. But the Bible also talks about us honoring other people. We know it talks about honoring our father and our mother. The Bible says that in Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 2, For this is the first commandment with promise. And many times we find, the Bible says also, you know, honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long on this earth. So when you honor your father and your mother, listen, you have good health, good life. Honoring is so important. The Bible tells us to honor those who have rule over us. Leviticus 19, it says, um, let every, I'm sorry, Romans 13, it says, let every soul be subject unto a higher powers for there is no power but of God the powers that are be are ordained of God we have to honor those who the Lord has set for us to honor your future is determined by who you choose to honor and we don't just honor people because we feel like it or because we think they deserve it we honor someone we honor someone Listen, in the world, you honor someone, then you find reasons to honor them. The world says you honor somebody because of who they are or because of their accomplishments. But God says honor them because of who we are. Because of who, not because of who they are, but you honor them because of who we are. And there, there are those of us who have taken marriage vows, promised to love, honor, and cherish for better or worse. Because of our love for them, not because of their great accomplishments or their social status, because of our love for them. And that promise was our gift to our spouse, not something that they earned, because certainly they didn't earn it at that time. Not something that they earned by always doing what we wanted them to do. But in the same way, we honor, the honor that we show to others is our gift to them, not something that they must earn from us. All blessings come from the chain of authority. And I tell you, the prison is full of men because they were not trained to honor. And I say men and women as well. Our children are walking around because they're not trained to honor. Honor helps us to understand who we are 
in the things of God, even in the earth realm. Your future is determined by who you choose to honor. And knowledge, listen, knowledge is power. Knowledge is a secret to change. And that's why the enemy tries to fight so hard against our young men and women who are in schools, trying to keep them out of schools because knowledge is the secret to change. And many of us don't know that secret. And how do you know? We cannot change your life until you change what you know. And many times these 15, 16, 17 year olds, they think they know so much and it's so difficult to, to, to penetrate their brain or their thinking. But if I can change what you know, I can change what you do. I can change how you act. And that's what the Lord is saying. And if we fail, it will be because of who we choose to dishonor. The Lord is, the Bible is saying, honor the Lord. Honor the Lord. If you succeed, it will be because of the person you choose to honor. Who do you honor? Do you honor your children? Sometimes even as parents, we don't even honor our children. Do you honor your parents? Do you honor your church? Do you honor your pastors? Do you honor one another over yourselves? Do you honor God? If you want to break the back of poverty, honor somebody. If you want to break the back of poverty, honor somebody. Honor someone. Bishop I. B. V. Hilliard, we went to visit him. He talked about the seven entitlements to blessings. And they were in the word of God. And the first one started about, about honoring first fruits. It's where we first heard about it, first learned about it some 10 years ago. And we can begin to participate in it. And I'm telling you, the Lord has been blessing us ever since. And he gave us these entitlements. I only have six minutes. So I don't think I have all time to share them all. But the first one was, he said, the floor of abundance with the ability to store up and save. This is an entitlement to blessings. There will be a floor of abundance with the ability to store up and save. And that's found in Proverbs chapter 3, as I already read it. Honor the Lord with your first fruits. Honor the Lord with your increase. Because Proverbs 3 and 10 says, it says, So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. That's an entitlement to blessing because you honored the Lord. Number two, it says, He will take away the desire of the enemy to hurt me. That's found in Exodus Chapter 34, verses 23 through 26. It says, Thrice in the year, all of the men children appear before the Lord God, the God of Israel. It says, For I will cast out nations before thee and enlarge thy borders. Neither shall any man desire thy land. And when thy shall go up before the Lord thy God three times in the year, thou shalt offer the blood of the sacrifice with leaven. Neither shall the sacrifice of the feast of the Passover be left unto the morning. And then it says, The first of the first fruits of thy land, shall thy bring into the house of the Lord thy God, and thou shalt not see the kid in his mother's milk. He will take away the desire of the enemy to hurt me. Number three says he will expand your land holdings. That's an entitlement for a blessing. The Lord will expand your land holdings. We believe that. Wherever it is that your foot shall trod, you shall possess the land. The Lord has given you a place to possess. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm talking about getting in position to receive the blessing that the Lord has for you. That's our prayer for Monday. Getting in position. I get in position by honoring, by honoring those who, listen, the Lord has told me for, to honor. It says he will drive out opposition to my increase and make room for me. He will place a blessing, his blessing on my household. It's found in Ezekiel 44 and 3. A consecrated blessing will be on the rest of my increase. That's found in 11, Romans chapter 11, verse number 16, where it says, For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy, and if the root is holy, so are the branches. So there will be a consecrated blessing on the rest of my increase because he will make everything else that I have holy. So when I give, when I set aside the one part, the Lord says, because you set that part aside for me, everything else shall be holy. The root, if the root is holy, if the root dies, generally whatever is attached to the root is going to die as well. But because you consecrated the part 
the first and best. It shall always be attached to the root and it shall always flourish and be nourished. Number seven is, is it will cause supernatural supply in the kingdom of God. Which is why I say to you, when you make your first fruit offering, I want you to see to your own churches so the kingdom of God will be blessed. That there will be a supernatural supply in the kingdom of God. So what I'm asking today is that you hear this word of first fruit. Study upon it. Read upon it if you don't believe what I'm saying. Because I'm a witness that God will do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ever ask or think according to the power that works inside of us. You got to have the faith to believe it. And I'm telling you, you got to have the wisdom that you need to make the decisions that will bring financial freedom in your life. I'm talking about financial freedom. There will be financial freedom and there will be, I mean, finances that will step out of the shadows and make your life, listen, favorable like never before. You will have favor like never before. Night like never before. And I'm telling you, good morning, Sister Jacqueline, Sister Dorothy, good morning. If you keep what you have, that is the most it will ever be. But if you sow, it's the least that you'll ever have. And I know your pastors have already talked about this, but... You have every right to expect a supernatural blessing from God. And when you do something from God's, for God's family, he will do something for you. We know just like we do our gifts and our tithes into the storehouse. The Bible tells us that in Malachi 3, 8 through 10. Will a man rob God, rob God? We're not God robbers. But he says, bring you all the tithes and the offerings, including the first fruit offering into the storehouse. There will be meat in the house of God. And it says, prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will what? Not, if I won't open you a window of heaven and pour you out such a blessing that you just simply will not have room enough to receive it. And then it says, prove me now. Come on, prove him. He says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, that he will not eat the fruit of your ground. That's an entitlement. Goes on to say, listen, all the people shall call you blessed, all nations will call you blessed because you have what? You have helped the families of God. You've helped everyone in the churches because, listen, it's not, it's not up to you to decide what happens with the funds. The Lord just says, you give it. He says, I'll, I'll do the distributing. I'll do that. I'll make happen what happens. So whatever you put in the hands of God would multiply, multiply back to you when you need it the most. Sowing your seed will bring a desired result. You cannot change your life until you change the voice that you trust. You got to change the voice that you trust. Release the seed into the hand of God. And God will release a harvest into your hands. He will release it. The seed speaks to your future. And your future is determined by who you honor God will multiply it for you. He'll multiply it to you. So in this season, we are. We are sowing an uncommon seed. And we can trust God for an uncommon harvest. We are breaking the back of poverty because of who we are choosing to honor. Something in my hand is controlling my future. I will not eat my seed I will not take my seed to Macy's. I will not take my seed to Walmart. I will not take my seed to St. John 9 West. I will not spend my seed. I will not eat my seed. But I will seed into the house of God. When God speaks about my seed, he has a harvest in mind. He has a harvest in mind. My seed is marked. It is marked for increase. It is marked for greatness. It is marked for me. And God promises purposes and promises a hundredfold return over my life. And when I release my seed, a harvest will come. Who are you honoring today? Your future is determined by who you honor. Honor the Lord with your increase, with the first fruit of all of your harvest. Your barns will be overflowing your vats will be filled with plenty. Get rid of those old wine skin because new wine is coming. 
new wine is coming. If this word has been a blessing to you and you believe it will bless someone else, I ask that you share it. Share it with someone else. But on March 16th, I want you to be ready to sow your seed into your own house. And then I will also have a link that if you want to make a contribution to Kingdom Life, you're welcome to do that. But I want you to bless your own house, that your house may be blessed. Father God, we just thank you for this word. I thank you, Lord God, for how you've spoken to my spirit, Lord God, that the people of God might be blessed, that the people of God might be healed and set free. Lord God, that we, God, will break the backs of poverty. Lord God, you've given us a way, Lord God, to get wealth. The Bible says you give us the power, the ability to get wealth. And Lord God, we don't understand why the people of God are walking around in lack when you've given us so much. And so, God, because of this word, I pray that they will be engrafted to the hearts and the minds of the people of the Lord, God, that they may be changed. The people that they were, God, the people that they are, that you've created them to be, that they will take this word, Lord God, and use it to their benefit, Lord God, but to your glory. That, Lord, we will no longer walk around in lack. We will no longer, God, walk around in despair, Lord, but we will walk around in the blessings that you have called for us to walk around in. I thank you, Lord God, that we, God, because our future is determined by who we honor, we will most of all, first and foremost, Lord God, choose to honor you. But then, Lord, choose to honor, Lord, who you told us to honor, that we will not walk around, God, in disarray, Lord, disrepair, Lord God, distress. We thank you, Lord God, for who you are, who you created us to be. And as we go about this day, Lord, you will minister to us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for the seven entitlements of blessing. Because we recognize, Lord, that you have everything for us. All things laid up for us, Lord God. And we want everything that you have for us, God. What is for us? We want it, Lord. We don't want anything that is not for us, Lord God. But everything that you have for us, we want it, God. Release it into our hands as we let go of the seed that belongs to you. Lord, I thank you for the people of God who join me in this broadcast. And I pray, Lord God, a 100-fold blessing over their lives right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, people of God. Thank you so much for joining this morning. I will see you again on tomorrow. I want you to know that I love you all with the love of Jesus. You go in peace.